Thanks, Andy. It's time to get down to the nitty gritty of K-State basketball. The question on everyone's mind is, which K-State basketball team will end up being more successful? A team under two stars like Michael Beasley and Bill Walker in the 07-08 season, or this season's team with multiple potential stars and leaders like Denny Clemente and Jacob Pullen. Now the 07-08 team went 10-6 on conference games and 11-6 on all non-conference, leaving their record at 21-12 overall. Of course, that included a win over KU that ended a 24-game losing streak at home to the Jayhawks. Meanwhile, this season is looking very promising. The current team has a 6-1 overall record, including our first victory over a ranked non-conference team since 2000. We have Brett Regan and John Kurtz here to debate this burning question. Here's how this will work. You each have a minute to present your case, 30 seconds for a rebuttal, and 30 seconds for any closing statements. Let's take it back in time to 2007. Brett, you're first. Ready to bring the noise? Absolutely. Go. Uh, I would like to say that uh, the 07 08 team was a much better team. It was more well equipped just due to the stars that they had in Michael Beasley and Bill Walker. It's not every day that Kansas State would get someone, uh, a consensus All American, such as Michael Beasley. And the one thing about him and Bill Walker is. That, that they were sure things. Everything that uh, this team has, you know, kind of lacks, you know, the go-to guy, the, you know, a need for a basket, a need for a defensive stop, a need for a rebound. That team was able to establish that, you know, establish that presence and uh, get, some, get a needy bucket if, if time necessary. Now, as, f as far as depth, we are kind of, they were kind of low in depth. You know, they started in two or three guards that, you know, had, had experience but did not necessarily have the athletic ability and the talent level. They started a small forward for half the season that, you know, ne not necessarily was the greatest either. It was just a defensive specialist. They, they weighed so heavy on those two guys being the offensive floor leader and the floor leaders at the same, t at the same time. Um, but they also lost Sohn and David Hoskins, who was a great rebounding threat uh, throughout throughout his junior season. And uh, having him sit out with a neat, uh, season time. Now on to you, John. How do you? What's your statement? Well, it, the biggest thing here is just the overall depth uh, that this year's team brings to the table. I mean, it's just. It's just incredible the amount of talent that's there in terms of, of how it breaks down in depth. You've got nice depth at the guard play with Jacob Pullen and Denny Clemente leading things. Then you bring uh, Rodney Magruder, four-star recruit, off the bench. You've also got Nick Russell, a three-star rivals recruit who had a, a, a scholarship offer from UCLA. I mean, that's just it's a lot of great talent coming off the bench, and that doesn't even begin to start in the post. I mean, the depth in the post is just amazing. You have Wally Judge coming off the bench. You have uh, Curtis Kelly coming off the bench, former five-star kid, UConn transfer. It's, it's just incredible the amount of talent that's been there. It's probably the most talented team overall here at K-State in about 20 years. I mean, sure, you had the star power in 07, 08 of Mike Beasley and Bill Walker. But in terms of just the overall depth you bring to the table, I mean, that's just incredible. Also, another big thing, I think there wasn't a whole lot of veteran leadership in 2007, 2008. You had Blake Young and Clint Stewart, but they're not really big vocal leaders. Now you have Jacob Pullen and Denny Clemente, who know how Frank Martin wants to play. Those are all pretty good points. Now you each have 30 seconds for your rebuttal, so hopefully you guys can bring that fire. You ready? Yep. All right. Uh, as far, I will agree with you that you uh, that the, this team has a lot more depth and a lot more talent um, at, at at all positions. But when it comes down to it, uh, everyone knew their role on the team. Uh, there wasn't a, such a sure, you know, a sure thing. Uh, everyone had their role. Everyone knew what they were doing on that team. You know, they knew that if they needed something, they would go to those two guys. This team is, you know, seems a little lost at times. Seems a little not focused. Uh, on what they really are trying to accomplish, and that's and that's to get an NCAA bid. It was easy having Michael Beasley with, uh, with to get an at large bid with an All American. That thirty seconds went pretty fast. It's your turn. Uh, well, I can see I, I can see that type of argument, a go-to guy. But you know, I really think I feel like this team has a decent amount of go-to power in itself. The fact that you know Jacob Pullen's putting up about twenty points a game right now. Jacob Pullen is really a leader when this team needs something. He steps up. He's the one that's driving to the hoop, getting contact, at least getting to the foul line. He's hitting his free throws. I really like Jacob Pullen's kind of leadership power. I feel like he really pulls the team uh, when they need an offensive bucket. Maybe to some extent Denny Clemente as well, although he's a little more hot and cold. But I think they've got that as well in this team.
I think both teams are shaping up. The 07-08 season team was really good, and I think this season's team is really shaping up to match that. But um, you guys have time for some final statements, just 30 seconds each. Kind of convince each other. You ready? Like I said before, it, it was very easy for Kansas State to get an automatic bid with star power with Michael Beasley and Bill Walker. This team has a little bit of work to do. Sure, the win over Dayton was very good. It, you know, it, it gave them a win that we hadn't had since 2000. Uh, but, but all said and done, the 07-08 team seemed like a more complete team because the, they were young, they were 18, but they were just told to go out and play. And I think that was to their advantage. You know, they, you know, a lot of them were, you know, Mike and Bill were one and done. So they had a... Uh, they, they were easy. It was easy for them just to go out and play the game. That's a good point there. Ready? Yep. Well, I, r I really just think that, that overall, I mean, looking at a tournament run here, which is the end goal in all of this, of course, is, you know, which team could make it farther in the tournament. I just think that the overall depth is going to help a lot when you're having to play multiple games in a weekend in the tournament, big-time situations. They've got some experience. You've got guys like Jake, Denny, Jamar, Dominique Sutton, Luis Colon. All these guys have experience playing with Frank Martin. They're tough. They've been through the grind before. They know how to play. And also, I just like the guard play so much more in tournament play. And that's time. That brings us to the end of today's brawl. Brett, John. You both presented some great points and brought the intensity to the court today. I guess we'll get the true answer to our question at the end of this season. Stay tuned to K-State Men's Basketball for the results, and remember to buy those tickets. Now on to Whitney Francis for a preview of what's coming up in K-State sports. Well, winter sports are well underway now. Let's take a quick peek at what lies ahead for the men and women's basketball teams. Looking ahead in men's basketball play, the 6-1 Wildcats will be at home for the next couple of matchups. They will take on Washington State this Saturday with tip-off at 8 p.m. And then on Tuesday, December 8th, the Cats look to host Xavier. The game will also tip off at 8 p.m. The women will be hosting the Conference Bank Tournament this weekend. To kick off the tourney, Missouri State will take on UTEP at 4 p.m. in Bramlage. The Lady Cats will then play at 6 against Grambling State. The consolation game will then be played on Saturday at 1 p.m. and the championship game will follow. The Wildcats will then get a small break before playing on Sunday, December 13th at home against Northwestern. Tip-off is set for 2 p.m. Well, that's all we have time for today. Thank you for watching this semester of Purple Power Play. Be sure to check out our very own Purple Power Play channel on YouTube to watch any past episodes. Have a great night, everyone.